Hey there, welcome back to Big Board. I'm gonna do a five minute capsule video. Why? Because I'm using dual camera, number one. And number two, because that's how long I have with dual camera recording, according to my little camera here. So, we now have uh, four minutes and 47 seconds, so let's get on with it. We're looking at uh, Tenkakatsu, uh, which is uh, a Francois van der Moulin design. It's from France, it's from the uh, Hexasim uh, group of guys. This is the second title in this series. <clears throat> it is very, very interesting. If you have an interest in Japanese med medieval history, I'm going to jump right into this. Get it. Get uh, Kawanaka, Kawane, Kawanaka Jama, Jima as well. This is the other title. I've got both in this box here. This guy's currently unpunched, and you may wonder, well, Kevin, why are you doing capsule comments if you haven't... Uh, you haven't played it. Well, I have played it. I played with my buddy. We played face-to-face uh, -face at Emerald Tavern in Austin, Texas, and it was a great time. And let's talk about why it's a great time. And that's where I need my little frickin' list of stuff so that I don't forget anything. This piece of paper here keeps me honest. So, <clears throat> these are battles. They're battle scale, so it's tactical or grand tactical. And uh, the time scale is, you know, fairly fungible here. We've got uh, you know a couple hundred meter hexes, and we have a a game that is trying to do, make you make choices in and around uh, discrete formations of men, with each formation being a hundred or two hundred men or thereabouts, maybe three or four hundred men, depending on the given circumstances. And so you're you're put clearly in the role of the army. Let's call it the army leader or the, uh, the, the Shogun's not the right word, uh, maybe it's the Daimo or the, 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 the feudal lord who's running things. And it's Ayasu and uh, Tokugawa, in this case, that are the two leaders feuding and fighting with each other. The Battle of Sekigahara that we played is it's set in 1600. Very, very specific and complex battle because there are a lot of shifting loyalties in the game, in the, in the game, in the battle. And this, this title does a great job of, of representing that in a very clever way. And the, the, uh, uh, the shifting loyalties and allegiances uh, uh, mature over time. So this game pays you dividends if you're patient uh, in terms of trying to capture uh, the uh, specific loyalties of a particular clan. And as a Tokugawa army, you're going to need them because you're, you're, you're looking at getting your ass kicked if they all go the wrong way. <clears throat> you obviously have perfect knowledge on the map uh, because of the, 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 the paucity of units. There's no stacking here either. And uh, your, your, your player objectives are very straightforward. Uh, you're beating the other guy and keeping track of VPs by uh, knocking out units and uh, can pick, pick up an instant win. Uh, by knocking out one of the clan leaders. <clears throat> OB, I think, is all estimated. I don't think anybody actually knew exactly how many uh, samurai versus ashigari were in a particular uh, formation or how many guys were there. So there's, uh, there's probably some, fl some flex and flux in, in the, uh, the OB. Combat resolution is worth a one-minute conversation here because it's a, a very fascinating... Uh, piece of uh, the the game. I've got this upside down. That will help if I put it the right way. Uh, combat is resolved with two sets of dice. They're red and blue, and uh, you roll two d six uh, uh, for uh, each column. And the net result of that is going to you're going to add and subtract dice from that, or you're going to add and subtract um, DRMs. Uh, I should say you're going to add and subtract DRMs. I'm going to I'm not going to make the five minutes. We're we're hosed here. So what we'll do is we'll make two videos, I guess. Uh, I'll just watch where the time is and we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, so let's talk about combat for a second. So I take 2d6 and I, I use my, uh, my Elan and my, um, now I've forgotten, formation. Uh, basically, my Elan and density is, is what it basically is. And I'm using those two attributes to try and drive uh, where the result is going to end up. There's a frustrating number of no result results, and these battles can be very, very swingy. And we're going to talk about that uh, more in just a moment. I'm going to actually let the clock run out on this video and start another one. 
So, coming back to combat. Let's have a look at the combat results table. I think that might be a clearer and smarter way to try and show you what's, what goes on here. So, as you can see, we're rolling 2d6, uh, and one is uh, one's for Elan, and one is for uh, the, the, the mass of the formation. And what we have here is a, a, we're intersecting the, the, the two die rolls, and we're then uh, achieving results that are bad for the attacker, or good for the defend, uh, bad for the defender, and uh, mutually destructive in the middle here. And there's a set of uh, combat modifiers over here on the right-hand side uh, that will impact your game, your your play, right, your uh, results. But more importantly, in, is here where what type of combat are we involved in here? Uh, are we both attacking? Are we both on the move? Are we uh, in, now both in melee versus one attacking and one standing uh, in defense, etc., etc.? And and this Elan and Mass is the uh, the driving factor for these combat results. So we must have had 50 or 60 combats, and I would say at least half of them would end up being a, a no result. And at first that can be very frustrating, but when you start to understand what's going on with the battle, that once you're actually in this thing, you're in and fighting, you're going to have a hard time pulling your guys back out of the battle and, and you know, recovering them or, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking away damage from them or whatever the case may be. Once you're in, you're pretty much in. So you've got to make the right choice at the right time about how you want to engage with the, uh, with the enemy. Now, the other interesting thing about this game, and I want to touch on this just a little bit, I'm letting the camera do its focusing thing. Once again, the Europeans, uh, I think, light years ahead in game design when it comes to map, map graphics. Uh, they're using the hex sides to denote what type of terrain you're in and what the cost is going to be. So if the terrain has a gap, uh, the hex side has a gap in it, it has one, a certain one cost. If it has a full bar across it for the hex side, it has a different cost. If it has a road or a trail running across it, it's going to have a different cost. Uh, if it's got these little, ar these little uh, arrows, kind of what you might see in half gap, that's also going to impact the cost and affect the combat. Fantastic, because now we don't have to clutter the map up with with hill and dale and valleys and ridges and specific bits and pieces and terrain charts that I've got to go looking up the whole time. I can look at the map, look at the hex side and go, oh, that's going to cost me one movement point. No, oh, that one was going to cost me one and a half or two or whatever the case may be. Perfect. Fantastic. Beautiful artwork on these maps. Beautiful counters. So, you know, I'm kind of raving about this game a little bit and I've only played it once. Uh, and I have not got all into, into all of the details because there's so much to this game. There's a uh, fascinating uh, situation where you've got a certain number of orders you're allowed to allocate each turn that you're rolling for, so you get a number of points. You, each formation is going to have a number, and you are going to allocate orders to those formations, and those orders are going to stand until you attempt to change them, and then you're going uh, uh, to use the orders... Uh, the points that you have to place units in the chip cup to be drawn randomly to see who moves, who fights, whatever the case may be, across the, the span of the turn. Fantastic way to really give that ebb and flow of uh, medieval combat. This could work for ancient combat as well. I could see this being applied in many, many different ways. And it really is far, far superior to, to Samurai and Ran as far as it goes, uh, you know, as far as those games go in terms of uh, their ability to convey the functional uh, aspects of, the, of Japanese Warcraft. It's really very, very interesting. Uh, and of course you have the ability to, so this is uh, the orders mechanism and the points allocated here and all this sort of good stuff, fantastic. And then you have this, uh, uh, lots of neat little uh, tuned uh, in uh, Japanese uh, uh, cultural things where we're dealing with, you know, samurai heroes coming out as a uh, formation is about to collapse and that's going to spur on guys or limit guys or uh, uh, get guys to uh, rally around the samurai. Uh, lots and lots of really good stuff going on here in these games. I, I highly encourage you to explore the historical narrative with these. Lots of replay value with these games too, I think. Uh, with this, There's four battles, I think, or three battles in this particular uh, title. going to take a little while to play until you get the hang of it, but enjoy, right? Take your time and embrace it. 
and why you're embracing it, uh, you should also be looking at uh, just when you set these games up. When these when these you know, these units are placed on the map, and you're looking at the mons for the different clans, and you're assessing what you're going to do, you are, for me anyway, immediately transported deeply into the uh, the, the period. Um, there's another layer to this game as well, where which is more optional, where you can choose a, a style of attack. There's a whole range of uh, uh, attacks that you can uh, look at that give you a specific set and sequence of orders that are going to be executed, and depending, uh, and but they have to be activated. Uh, you know, I, I forget the names of them all, but it's the long snake or the uh, drunken monkey or whatever the case may be. Uh, you're looking at uh, choosing these specific uh, formations. I'm trying to find uh, some of the names here now, but uh, those names are going to drive. They're going to drive the uh, narrative of the battle even further because if you choose the wrong formation type uh, and it doesn't activate at the right time, you know you're in a world of hurt. And if your competitor uh, or opponent has chosen a better uh, attack or defense. Uh, to uh, counter your what you may do, then you're in you're in for uh, interesting times, at the Chi as the Chinese would say. So, um, the only the only downside to this game is I found I found the rules modestly confusing. Uh, only in that you need to be thoughtful. It's a game that will not be digested by just reading the rules. You're going to have to set some units up, go through the most the motions of playing a turn to understand why and how things work. You cannot, for me anyway, I could not grok what was going on with the rules here and how the different systems interrela 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 interrelated with each other uh, until I actually put a uh, unit to map and uh, got into the heat of battle with my opponent. Uh, Pete and I had a great time with this. We're we're ready to uh, set up Naganute and uh, come back to Sekigahara. We we discussed strategy for both sides uh, this time you know, for the next time that we play. So uh, this is going to get two or three more plays than we have the other battle that uh, I, I purchased uh, a little while back. And there's another title coming. So there's lots more to come in this series. Get a hold of it. Uh, Hexasim tends to try and keep stuff in in supply. But uh, when they do pop out of supply, uh, I've noticed that the prices on these guys tend to pop up pretty high. So, uh, one of one of the better games I've played this year, I, I gotta say, in terms of theme, history, unit uh, uh, component quality, and game rich gameplay, I would say right off the bat right now, this is probably my number one game that I've played this year, based on the fact that based on the fact of one play. Right, uh, maybe I'll change that opinion after after a couple more plays. Uh, you, know, you only get beaten at this freaking thing so many times, right? But besides that, I enjoyed myself. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed a quick little look at this. Uh, it's not very often I give a glowing endorsement to a, to a title, uh, but this is uh, an exceptional piece of design and very thoughtfully done, right down to the information counters. Right, uh, each. You know, these, these these represent damage here. So uh, more damage, more blood strikes, right? Uh, less damage, and you flip your unit over a certain time, depending on what's going on in the game. Uh, these are your order chits here, just beautifully and thoughtfully done. So fantastic job, uh, fantastic job. All right, that's all I got for you. Take care, peace.